In the shadowed corners of Japanese folklore lies the chilling legend of Kuchisake Ona, the slit-mouthed woman. Brace yourself as we delve into the haunting tale of a vengeful spirit that has sent shivers down the spines of generations. Long ago, in the quiet villages of ancient Japan, there lived a beautiful woman named Kuchisake Ana. She was renowned for her allure, enchanting anyone who crossed her path. But underneath her captivating facade, a sinister heart lurked. Kuchisake Ana was married to a samurai, but he was unfaithful to her with another woman. Consumed by jealousy and rage, Kuchisake Ana confronted her husband's lover, leading to a violent altercation. In a fit of anger, her husband took a sword and slashed her mouth from ear to ear, giving her a ghastly, permanent smile. Distraught and disfigured, Kuchisake Ana tragically succumbed to her wounds. But the tragedy didn't end there. Kuchisake Ona's spirit, unwilling to accept her fate, rose from the grave with a burning desire for revenge. She became a vengeful yokai, a malevolent spirit, haunting the land she once called home with her tattered kimono and her grotesque bloodied mouth. Kuchisake Ona returned to the mortal realm, seeking retribution against unfaithful men and punishing those who dared to defy her. Legend has it that Kuchisake Ona would roam the streets at night, wearing a surgical mask to hide her disfigured mouth. She would approach unsuspecting passersby and ask them a simple question. She'd ask, am I beautiful? If the person responded with a compliment, she would remove her mask, revealing her horrific, slit-mouthed grin and ask the question again. No matter what the person said the second time, the consequences were dire. If they said no, Kuchisake Ona would end their life on the spot, forever dooming their soul. If they said yes, she would cut their mouth to resemble hers, condemning them to share her ghastly fate for eternity. To escape Kuchisake Ona's wrath, some had devised clever strategies. They would give ambiguous answers or throw candies or valuable items at her, briefly distracting her and making their escape while she collected the offerings. Kuchisake Ana is the ghost of a woman who was mutilated and has come back to wreak vengeance on the world. Her name comes from the deep, bloody gash, which runs across her face, grinning from ear to ear. She appears at night to lone travelers on the road, covering her grisly mouth with a cloth mask, a fan, or a handkerchief. The legend of Kuchisake Ona continues to haunt Japan passing down through generations as a cautionary tale of the consequences of jealousy and betrayal. So, the next time you find yourself walking alone in the darkness, remember the story of Kuchisei Gona and beware of the slit-mouthed woman. Long ago, in the bustling city of Tokyo, there lived a young woman named Kena. She was known for her ethereal beauty, her raven black hair cascading down like a waterfall and her enchanting charm that could capture anyone's heart. But despite her allure, Kana led a difficult life, facing hardships and struggles. One fateful evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Kana found herself alone on a deserted train platform. The moon shone brightly overhead, casting an eerie glow upon the surroundings. As she waited for the train, a group of bullies approached cruelly taunting her for her poverty and loneliness. Fearing for her safety, Kana fled from the platform, tears streaming down her cheeks. Tragically, in her haste to escape, she slipped and fell onto the tracks just as the train approached. The speeding train collided with her, and in an instant, Kana's life was cut short, her body horrifically severed in two. The legend says that Kana's spirit lingered, trapped between the realms of the living and the dead, cursed by a deep desire for vengeance against those who wronged her. Over time, her spirit transformed into a vengeful and malevolent entity, half human and half creature, with her upper body dragging along the ground and sharp, bony hands resembling the legs of a spider. From then on, she became known as Teak Tech for the eerie sound her upper body made as it scraped against the ground like a ghastly tech. Tech, tech, 
echoing through the night. As the sun set and darkness engulfed the city, Tech Tech would emerge from her hiding place, seeking out her victims. She targeted those who bore any resemblance to her tormentors, exacting her revenge upon the cruel and heartless. Many claim to have seen her ghostly apparition, her long black hair flowing behind her, and her eyes burning with an intense rage. Those who were unfortunate enough to encounter Tech T. Keck would be paralyzed with fear, unable to escape her relentless pursuit. For once, she had set her sights on a victim. There was no escaping her wrath. She would chase them relentlessly, her inhuman speed matched only by her insatiable thirst for revenge. The legend of Teak Tech, Tech spread like wildfire, haunting the dreams of the city's inhabitants. Parents warned their children not to stay out late, lest they encounter the vengeful spirit and meet a gruesome end. Some even claimed to hear her ghastly Tech Tech sound in the distance, on particularly dark nights. As years passed, the legend of Teak Teak evolved, taking on new variations, each more spine-chilling than the last. Some say that if you encounter her and manage to outrun her, she will come to you in your dreams, relentlessly pursuing you until madness takes hold. Others believe that her victims would suffer the same fate, become vengeful spirits themselves, doomed to roam the earth and hunt down the wicked. To this day, the chilling tale of Teak Tech, Teak endures, whispered in hushed tones, passed down through generations. Whether she is merely a cautionary tale to keep misbehaving children in check or a malevolent entity lurking in the shadows, ready to exact her revenge, one thing remains certain. Never underestimate the power of a restless spirit seeking vengeance. For in the darkness, you may just hear the terrifying tech tech drawing nearer, and that could be the last sound you ever hear. This story begins in a small coastal village nestled between lush mountains and turquoise seas. It was said that many years ago, a beautiful young woman named Magdalena lived in this village. She was known for her striking beauty, her radiant smile captivating the hearts of all who laid eyes upon her. But Magdalena was far more than just a pretty face. She possessed an extraordinary gift, one, that she kept hidden from the prying eyes of her neighbors. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the moon cast its silvery glow upon the land, Magdalena's true nature revealed itself. She was not an ordinary woman, but a creature of darkness. Amon and Engel, as night fell, she would retreat to a secluded spot, far from the prying eyes of the villagers, and undergo a gruesome transformation. With her large bat-like wings unfurling from her back, she would separate from the waist up, leaving her lower half behind. In this monstrous form, her upper body would take flight, searching for prey under the cover of the moonlit skies. She was a creature of the night, a predator of the shadows, and her insatiable hunger drove her to feed on the blood of the innocent. The villagers lived in perpetual fear, for they knew that when the Manannan angle was on the prowl, no one was safe. They would bar their windows and doors, praying that their homes would be spared from the creature's terrifying visits. But the man in angle was cunning and would find the smallest cracks to slip through, leaving a trail of terror and despair in her wake. As the legend spread, the villagers sought protection against the man in angle. They learned that she was vulnerable during her transformation, while her lower half remained motionless and defenseless. To fend her off, they would smear garlic and salt on the lower torso left behind, believing these could repel the creature and keep it from rejoining and becoming whole once more. However, Magdalena's dual nature created a torment within her. By day, she was a kind and gentle woman, going about her daily routines, living among the very people she hunted at night. Deep down, she yearned for an escape from her curse to be free from the darkness that consumed her. One fateful day, a young man named Alejandro arrived in the village. He was a traveler, skilled in the healing arts, and possessed a curious fascination with mythical creatures. As fate would have it, Alejandro and Magdalena crossed paths, 
and despite her efforts to conceal her true nature, Alejandro noticed a sadness in her eyes that belied her outward beauty. Intrigued and determined to unravel the mystery surrounding Magdalena, Alejandro began to spend time with her. As they got to know each other, he sensed the torment she endured and sought to find a way to break the curse that bound her to the darkness. Together, they embarked on a perilous journey to discover the secret to lifting the curse of the man in angle. Their quest took them through ancient forests, treacherous mountains, and forgotten temples, where they encountered mythical beings and faced unimaginable challenges. Along the way, their friendship blossomed into something more profound, and Alejandro's unwavering compassion and determination became Magdalena's beacon of hope. Finally, after months of searching, they stumbled upon a wise and reclusive hermit known as the Babalon. The Babalon was said to possess ancient knowledge of the supernatural world, and it was believed that he could break the curse that bound Magdalena. In a secluded cave adorned with mystical symbols and flickering candles, the Babalon performed a powerful ritual. He chanted ancient incantations and sprinkled a potent potion over Magdalena, beseeching the spirits for her salvation. The ritual was arduous, and Magdalena's anguish threatened to overwhelm her. But with Alejandro's steadfast support, she persevered. As the first rays of dawn peeked over the horizon, the Babalon's chant reached its climax, and a surge of energy surged through Magdalena in a blinding flash of light. The curse that had plagued her for so long was broken. Her monstrous form faded away, leaving behind the woman she had always been. The kind, hearted, and beautiful Magdalena, free from the burden of the man in Angol. The village rejoiced, and the once fearful villagers celebrated Magdalena's liberation. From that day forth, she lived among them without the shackles of darkness. Her heart filled with gratitude for Alejandro and the Babalan, who had shown her the path to redemption and love. Magdalena and Alejandro became inseparable, and their love story became a beacon of hope for generations to come. The legend of the Mananongo lived on, but it was no longer a tale of terror. It became a testament to the power of compassion, bravery, and the triumph of love over darkness. And so, the story of the man in angle reminds us that even in the darkest of times, love and empathy can illuminate the way, and that sometimes, the most extraordinary beings are not found in the realm of mythical creatures, but in the depths of the human heart. In Jewish folklore, a dibuk is a restless and malevolent spirit, a tormented soul that has not found peace and seeks to attach itself to a living host. They are said to be drawn to objects, like the wine box, as vessels for their continued existence. Terrified by the connection between the box and the dibuk, Kevin attempted to rid himself of the cursed item, but no matter what he did, the box kept finding its way back to him. It seemed that the Dibuk was relentless in its desire to remain attached to the box and continue its malevolent presence in the living world. Desperate to be free of the ominous box's grasp, Kevin turned to his mother for help. She was a woman of spiritual insight and had experience dealing with the supernatural. Kevin's mother decided to investigate the box further, hoping to uncover a way to sever the connection between the Dibuk and its cursed vessel. Word of the sinister box spread, attracting the attention of collectors, paranormal enthusiasts, and skeptics alike. Each person who dared to possess it soon found themselves at the mercy of the Dibuk's wrath. The box passed from owner to owner, leaving a trail of fear and misery in its wake. In 2003, the box found its way into the hands of a man named Jason Haxton, determined to unravel the mystery and protect others from its malevolence. Jason dedicated himself to studying the box and its origins. He explored ancient texts, consulted scholars, and delved into Jewish mysticism, hoping to find a way to rid the world of the cursed artifact. But the Dibuk was not easily defeated. Its dark presence seemed to taunt Jason, manifesting in eerie occurrences that defied explanation. Despite his best efforts, the Dibuk remained attached to the box its power unabated, 
With each passing year, the legend of the Dibbuk box grew, capturing the imagination of the public and inspiring countless tales of horror. Internet forums and paranormal websites buzzed with stories of the cursed box, with some claiming to have encountered it firsthand, while others dismissed it as mere urban legend. Regardless of one's beliefs, the Dibbuk box had become an infamous symbol of terror, a chilling reminder that some objects carry a darkness beyond comprehension. Its story resonated with those who believed in the supernatural and served as a cautionary tale for those who dared to delve into the mysteries of the unknown. Whether the Dibbuk box is an elaborate hoax or a vessel for a malevolent spirit, its legend endures, reminding us that there are realms beyond our understanding forces that defy explanation, and that some mysteries are best left unexplored. So beware should you ever come across an aged wine cabinet with a dark past, for you may find yourself entangled in the chilling legend of the Dibbuk box, a tale that will forever haunt the shadows of our collective imagination. In the late 1960s, in a quaint and unassuming apartment located in the small town of Hartford, Connecticut, it was here that a young nurse named Donna received a peculiar gift from her mother. Donna was an avid collector of dolls, and her mother thought nothing of gifting her a vintage doll, a simple Raggedy Ann doll with button eyes and a charming smile. At first, Donna was delighted with her new addition, placing the doll on her bed as a decorative piece. But it didn't take long for strange and inexplicable occurrences to unfold within the apartment. Donna and her roommate Angie began to notice that the doll seemed to move on its own, changing positions within the room when they weren't looking. At first, they dismissed it as a mere trick of the mind, a product of overactive imaginations. However, as the days passed, the occurrences escalated. The doll was found in different rooms altogether, and Donna even claimed to have heard faint, childlike giggles emanating from empty corners of the apartment. Disturbed and fearful, the two roommates sought the help of a medium to understand the source of these unexplained phenomena. The medium revealed a horrifying truth. There was a restless spirit residing within the doll, a malevolent entity that had latched onto the innocent Raggedy Ann doll, and now sought to exert its sinister influence on the world of the living. The spirit, claiming to be that of a young girl named Annabelle Higgins, had once lived on the property before the apartments were built. Tragically, she had met an untimely and violent end, and her tormented soul now sought solace and possession of the doll. Initially unsure of how to respond, Donna and Angie felt a degree of sympathy for the spirit, believing it to be that of a lost and innocent child. They allowed Annabelle to remain in the apartment, hoping to provide the restless soul some semblance of comfort. However, it was a decision they would come to regret deeply. As days turned into nights, the malevolence of Annabelle's presence became undeniable. The doll appeared to move with purpose, adopting threatening positions and seemingly watching the room's occupants with its lifeless eyes. Donna and Angie were plagued by horrifying nightmares, visions of Annabelle attacking them in their sleep and waking up with unexplained scratches and bruises. In an attempt to understand the situation better, the two young women contacted renowned paranormal investigators, Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens, experienced in dealing with malevolent entities, quickly recognized the gravity of the situation. They discovered that the spirit claiming to be Annabelle Higgins was not a child at all, but a demonic entity, a powerful and dangerous force that sought to possess and harm the living. Realizing the peril they were in, the Warrens decided to intervene and protect Donna and Angie from the malevolent spirit. They determined that the doll needed to be removed from the apartment and safely contained so as to prevent it from inflicting further harm. The Warrens performed a powerful exorcism on the apartment, driving the entity out of the doll and sealing it away in a specially crafted glass case. But even this did not fully contain the malevolence. The demonic force continued to influence the lives of those who encountered it, leaving a trail of terror in its wake. The case containing Annabelle now rests within the Warren's Occult Museum, alongside numerous other cursed and haunted artifacts. 
It is encased in glass with a sign that reads, Warning. Positively do not open. The museum itself has become a beacon for those fascinated by the supernatural, a place of both fascination and fear. The tale of Annabelle serves as a stark reminder that there are dark and enigmatic forces in this world, beyond our comprehension and understanding. It warns us that not all that appears innocent is benign, and that sometimes malevolence can manifest in the most unexpected forms. And so, dear listeners, be cautious when encountering objects that seem to possess a hidden history, for within the shadows may lie entities hungry for souls and seeking to wreak havoc on our lives. The story of Annabelle will forever remain a chilling reminder that in the realm of the supernatural, there are mysteries and terrors that may never be fully understood.